Welcome to TradeSpoon. My name is Lakar Pella. I'm CEO and founder of TradeSpoon. And today we're going to have our weekly strategy roundtable where we talk about current market conditions, look at the macro data, top to bottom approach, you look at the model, look at the individual names that are stand out, and what to expect short term and long term. Uh, for those of you who are new, welcome. If this is your first live event, do me a favor, type in first. Always want to welcome new subscribers. Uh, this is my brief bio. I was, uh, my background is technology, I was a CTO of several fin financially fintech companies, and we, we are, are investing a lot of money in building uh, models and building uh, technology to help us uh, spot opportunities in the markets, spot signals. Um, um, and I've been, and then I use these signals to trade in the live trading room. Disclosures are very important. Please read them. Trading stock or options involve risk, not suitable for everyone. You must be aware of the risk and be willing to accept it in order to invest in current market conditions. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not registered with FINRA nor CC. I'm showing you what I do in my own account based on my own risk tolerance level for general education information purposes only. Please cons um, consult your financial advisor prior to making any trading decisions. All right, before we jump into our trading plan, let's figure out what uh, uh, what the market is doing. So, a lot, most volatility is in the 10 year yield uh, or in treasury market, right? Two year, 10 year. Uh, so, 10 year yield did break to this four and a half percent, right? After harder than expected CPI, it jumped all the way to 460. So, it did break through 450. 450 was an overhead resistance. Um, it also coincides to pullback that we had in August, um, September, when we jump above 4.3. So now we were at above 450. We're facing overhead resistance that's close to November high of last year, when Paul actually indicated that there'll be three rate cuts. Uh, so that's not good for the market. Market did pull back. It held the QQQ was able to hold down to the 50-day moving average. After then, softer than expected PPI. PPI came in a little bit softer than expected, and on the tension, Middle East tension, and potentially imminent attack of you know Iran against Israel. Um, you know, people are moving back into a treasury market. So treasury did break below four and a half what I think is important, um, overhead resistance level. So uh, high yield is not good because that's indication inflation. A rapid drop in um, yield is also not good because that's uh, fear of war, escalation, recession, and such and such. So for now, people are kind of scratching their hands. And you can see it in the price action of VIX. Right, VIX is at 18 level, right? It's the year-to-date high. We haven't had, it, you know, 18 handles since, you know, last pullback. So there's definitely more uh, issues in underlying current and you can, in volatility, and you can see the same price action in the junk bonds. Junk bonds did break year-to-date low, right? Day one, day two, day three, potentially approaching. 200 day moving average, that's also not a good uh, bullish signal. This is considered to be bearish. So that's the sign of concern. In terms of earnings, we had airline, Delta Airline announced earnings, kind of trading sideways. You know, it was up, down, up, down. Again, expectations are high that the earnings growth will reaccelerate, right? Because the market has moved, you know, from October lows, Delta Airline, you know, what was it 50% move so 50% move then you need to justify that 50% move was better than expected earnings I don't think there was anything fundamentally wrong with Delta Airlines earnings and it was up initially but now it's giving up all the gains uh, JP Morgan announced earnings beat the bottom line beat them the top line but the loans are less than expected right um, and interest rate payments are potentially less than expected. So in terms of for banks, we do have JP Morgan down 5%. Uh, Wells Fargo is flat, STT up 2%. Citigroup is fluctuating between gains and losses, right? And Wells Fargo is fluctuating between gains and losses. So, um, but uh, again, 
strong earnings, but if there's anything negative, like you know, loan origination is less than expected, or forward guidance is not raised, and then all of a sudden, you know, JP Morgan is down five percent because it also uh, increased by fifty percent since November, right? So, and I think that would be the theme of this earnings is that you either deliver strong earnings and then you will be rewarded. Right, or if there is anything uh, on the bottom, any issues on forward uh, guidance or bottom line, top line, and you will get, um, and the stock will drop. So, and our new season just started, so we still have to uh, digest it. Uh, the good news is that NVIDIA did not break through the 50-day moving average, right? It's still staying above 50-day moving average. We had actually two days in a row of pretty strong upward move in NVIDIA, uh, pretty strong move in Apple, right? Apple, the region uh, <clears throat> uh, bouncing back on this above average volume and positive today. And I think Meta and Amazon is trying to make new highs. Uh, Meta is trying to say sideways. Amazon, I think, briefly made the new new all-time high yesterday. All right. So what does all of that means? Right. We need to figure out, you know, how to invest. Um, looking at the spiders. Uh, there's earnings season just started. We already know about CPI, PPI data. We know the ECB decision that they're not raising interest rates. They're kind of waiting for the Fed. Fed, uh, you know, I, I was listening to some of the speakers and they're still saying we're data dependent. Yes, inflation is concerned, but we're still thinking about, you know, two rate cuts and probably not in June, but you know, maybe July, maybe September. We're going to look at the data, but no, the Fed has not changed its course, right? Uh, so, but we're not going to know the decision until end of April, right? So between now and the end of April, there's uncertainty, uncertainty about earnings season, uncertainty about, you know, escalation in the uh, Middle East, uh, and um, uh, how, you know, what, what will that say? Will they sound hawkish? Or, you know, they say maybe there is no interest rates or they sound, you know, dovish. Basically saying, you know, we're staying the course and we will have rate cuts. This. So there are two scenarios, right? We're at 50-day moving average. We've been retesting this level 510 multiple times. 50-day moving average since beginning of March, right? That's almost the lows, March lows. Um, beyond below that is 500, right? So we could drop, let's say, 20 points. I would say 490, right? So minus 20 points, where we're reaching 490, the lower Bollinger band, right? That's scenario number one. If JP Morgan doesn't deliver earnings and Delta Airlines cannot deliver earnings, and then we're gonna have energy and industrial names and the market is, you know, a lot of these names are up 50%. So then we drop, you know, to 20 points, you know, to 490 level. Right, that's scenario number two. I'll call it number two. Scenario number one: earnings are better than expected, right? And we go to uh, 530, 20 points, or 540, 535. So that's scenario number one. So if you're bullish and you think unemployment is low, everybody has job, wait, you know, everybody has you know, uh, jobs and making money, and uh, earnings season is going to be better than expected. And Fed will stay its course and will the lower interest rates, maybe not three times, but two times, maybe one and a half times. So that's scenario number one. Scenario number two, escalation in the Middle East uh, or um, earnings season is not as strong as expected. And we have scenario number two. Okay, so how many of you say scenario number one, we're heading high to 535 and 50-day moving edge will hold? I was actually looking at the positioning. For spiders, so there's still a pretty large position, at least until April 19th, still next Friday, at the 500 level, 
right, 500, and uh, relatively large position at 510, 30,000 at 510, 50,000 at 500, and if you go to May expiration, similar picture, most of the position is at 500, right, 500. Um, but you do have people buying, you know, May 420 puts, right, and in, in, in rather large quantities, right? So somebody thinks that we, we could get to 420 or 450, first stop is 450, uh, by buying the 450 puts on S&P. All right. All right, so coming of you say scenario number one, we're heading higher, coming of you say uh, scenario number two. Chuck, Dini, Joseph, Kevin, Martin, Peter, Rob, Fred, Michael, Trust, better. So how many of you say one, we're heading higher, and two, we're heading lower? All right, so most people say two, okay. Well, makes sense, right? The fear, the gauge of fear is elevated, right? It's not an extreme level, but people are concerned, right? There are signs of concern. And VIX continues to rise, so. Um, I'm gonna go with two. I'm gonna go with two. I think 500 level is gonna be well defended. Probably not gonna get to 490. That would be giving up all of the gains from the. NVIDIA earnings, right? This is NVIDIA earnings, the gap. At least for now, 500 level is well positioned. So I think there's a fear of escalation in the Middle East that's contributing. Whether that will happen or not, nobody knows. Um, but um, I'm going to go with uh, scenario number one. Sorry, scenario number one. So I think we're heading higher. And we are going to get to 530. 540 by you know end of May, partially because of the seasonality, partially because I think earnings is better than expected, and uh, um, um, yeah, and that's it, right? I think stronger than expected earnings, and uh, you know I would not fight the Fed at least as long as Fed continues to say that we will cut interest rates this year the passive list resistance until until at least you know may june is higher highs higher lows if the fed end of april says that something bearish right and you know spiders will not hold on to the 500 level then i agree we could get to 490 480. all right so how do you how do you manage that these positions uh, or what do you do one thing is to hedge right i propose that um whether you're bullish or bearish, one rule is not to have more than four positions, right? Uh, and uh, part of these positions could be uh, QQQ, right? I mean, gold, I'm long gold, right? One of the, the strongest performance for the bulls, what is hard to reconcile is this vertical move in silver and gold, right? because of the fear of the inflation so as long as silver and gold are moving vertically higher right as long as they're moving vertically higher then um then there is risk of uh, you know some kind of dislocations right uh, and i would pay attention to high yields so those are the two ways to hedge right one is to continue being long gold and silver on long gold and silver uh the other one is to 
uh, hedge with either DSQ or SH inverse ETFs or buying um, QQQ put spread, right? 450, 440 QQQ put spread. Which is another way to hedge your portfolio. So you can buy a put spread, you can buy SH and PSQ. So that would be my proposal of how to hedge the portfolio. Um, a trade spoon, we have different services, right? So if you're self-directed investor and you're confident trader, you have a trading plan, you 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 know how to execute the trades, we do have uh, different models, right? So one of our strong suit is building models have financial engineers that have degree in physics, economics, um, math, uh, building models, right? So we have active trader, weekly trader, and monthly trader. These are short-term, medium-term, and long-term signals. So for active trader, you know, Exxon Mobil, you know, energy, commodities, or on daily basis, model basically shows that there is a strong signal to the upside, and you can see you know, energy, aluminum, copper continues to grind higher. And you can buy these signals, right? You can trade them in the live trading room. I trade some of these signals and suggest that there's a suggested entry price based on your pre market, right? You can look at the pre market and see if the energy is up, then maybe you don't wait till 121. That's the predicted low. And then maybe you buy that yesterday's low, 121.79. If there's a gap like today, you just have to be consistent, right? If you don't have exposure to energy and you want ex energy, then you buy it at the you know, open price. Um, if not, then you wait for a pullback. Uh, we do propose to split the trades into two, right? Because you don't know, is the market going up? Is the market going down next 30 minutes? So we'll always split, you know, do dollar cost average. And here the idea is to risk 1%, right? You're risking 1% to make 1%. If you're doing weekly trader, it's kind of a similar idea, right? It just the holding time is longer, right? And you have industrials, you have, you know, uh, retail, some of the sector same thing. You would split the trade into two, right? Um, and, uh, but the holding time is a little longer, right? The holding time is a little longer. So those are active trader, weekly trader, and monthly trader. These are the signals and you can trade them based on suggested entry prices if you don't have a trading plan or you're not sure what to do when the price if the price does or does not reach these levels then i do propose to join elite circle elite circle i trade these signals right i don't trade all the signals that's not what the signals are meant for you know i do have top to bottom approach i look at the macroeconomic conditions at earnings and then out of the signals i pick and choose and then i trade them right so today I traded Wells Fargo, right? Did um, a butterfly in Wells Fargo. I closed the gold position. Uh, what else did I do? I hedged XLF position. So different strategies, or closed, sorry, closed XLF call, bought a hedge. So a combination of both stock and option trades. Some of them are event driven, like Wells Fargo earnings. Some of them are uh, directional trades. Where either trade option spreads or I trade stocks. So that's elite circle. Um, we also have premium portfolio where I trade only option spreads, and uh, we have a robo investor where I trade only stocks. So those are a combination of different portfolios and services that we have. Um, quite often I do use stock forecast toolbox, not quite often every day I use stock forecast toolbox. It also indicates, it shows you, well, the trend is downtrend, right? The, the model runs every day and makes calculations. It says short of the trade, there's a downtrend. Uh, long term, six months, there is an uptrend, right? A lot of people say, how can the model say long term up, but short term down? It happens all the time, right? You have long term, short term, medium term, and based on the short term, time horizon you know and data there's obviously a downward pressure but longer term there's a strong intact uptrend so even though you could have a pullback and the model does see potentially reaching 500 506 level uh, but on the upside you you know 555 so uh, stock forecast toolbox is the model that gives you these predictions you can also look at the company screener it gives you different idea which sector is, is outperforming right now which is underperforming 
So industrials, computer hardware, semiconductors, these are the stocks that are leading the market right now. You can drill into the specific names. Uh, so that's stock forecast toolbox. We also have seasonality, right? So if you want to look at the seasonality, you know, one of the reasons I am bullish that usually, you know, I mean, March, maybe beginning of April is flat, but then towards the end of the May, as earnings season unfolds, toward the May, with market is usually bullish, right? Not a great correlation because market kind of has been going in one direction, but nonetheless, there is a seasonality component, right? You can also look at the probability calculator. Basically shows you, again, based on historical volatility, 510 is your support, overhead resistance 525, 76% of the time we spend in that region, right? Two standard deviation would be, you know, moving 580, 456, but this, this is a rare event. Most time 510, 525. And then again, I would, you know, in live trading room, I do use uh, uh, dealer exposure and position. All right, any questions? XLF and C calls on open. Um, well, so far, the, I mean, there is a macroeconomic headwinds, right? So inflation is a little bit harder than expected three months in a row. That's, I think, causing the market to slow down. There's geopolitical risks. And I think there's just very high expectations for the earnings. So, so far, I mean, it's only been just, you know, a couple of days, but you can see that JP Morgan is down five and a half percent, right? Uh, and uh, Citigroup is flat, I mean, that's slightly down, Wells Fargo is, you know, basically flat, STT is slightly higher. So, um, at least for now, at least for now, um, I think it's kind of a mixed results. But the expectation is high, and uh, I think uh, the geopolitical risk people are concerned, right? So, and you can definitely see it in the price action of VIX. VIX is almost a 20 handle, right? So something is definitely happening underneath the hood where people are buying hedges, right? Despite that QQQ has not, brought, I mean, really there's no new signal in QQQ, right? It's sitting at the 50 day moving average, spider is sitting above 50 day moving average. QQQ has been in this position since end of February after the, you know, we're at the same level we were when after NVIDIA earnings. So, but you have a vertical move in, in silver, vertical move in oil, and more vertical move in VIX, right? And very volatile treasury market. So the question is, at what point does this volatility in commodities, treasury, and dollar, right? Dollar also is vertical move to the upside. At what point does it translate into you know, equity market. I mean, I would watch technology, right? I would watch technology and I would watch, uh, you know, the 50 day moving average and see if it holds or not. Joseph, am I still bullish energy? I mean, it was geopolitical risks, right? On the horizon. And assuming that economies are expanding, and they are, right? Uh, GDP is continuing to grow and uh, trading above average. I think the path, least, the path of least resistance in energy to continue going higher. And I still think it's a commodity boom cycle, right? With the high inflation. So whether it's aluminum, silver, or crude oil, the path of least resistance is to continue going higher. How would you structure strike price and expiration? Care secure put. Chuck, uh, what, you know, were in spiders or is there a specific name? 
I mean, you usually want to structure your, let's, let's do spiders, right? So spiders right now, the support is at 500, right? You have a pretty large position at 500. So in theory, if there is no war, right? I can't predict whether there will be a war between Iran and the United States, right? If there is, obviously this 500 level will not hold. Uh, but assuming there is no war, right? And this is just a exchange of rhetoric, right? Or they can exchange some, you know, um, small kind of tit for tat and there's no escalation and everybody forgets about it in a week, then 500 level should hold, right? There's a lot of put buying at the 500 level currently. So then let's look at the positioning. So we look at the position, let's see how much premium can you get, right? And VIX is rising dramatically, right? So VIX is, a, it's not anything extraordinary, but it is a, a, a approach in the, uh, It is approaching 20 level, which usually kind of the line in the center. If VIX jumps above 20, then usually there's something going on in the market. Uh, as long as it's below 20, I mean, it's elevated, obviously, especially when compared to 12, but nothing. All right, so April 12th, let's see. So let's, let's go to May 17th. By May 17th, we should have most S&P 500 companies announce earnings. Uh, and if you are selling, you know, if you have a larger portfolio, you're selling, let's say you think 500 level will hold, right? So you can sell 500 put right now that expires in May for $5. So you get 1%, right? By holding position for a month. Plus, uh, yeah, so 1% basically. So you can get five, 1% by selling 500 put. Uh, so your break even point will be 495. Right, so 495, we are at 515, so that would be uh, what is it? 17, uh, 17 points, so 3% less. You basically reducing your cost basis by 3%. Right, if you want to own spiders at 495, then it's great. But you do have to have a larger portfolio because you do have to realize if you sell one counter, collect $500 and let's say we do drop or let's say VIX breaks above 20 or there is a war over the weekend and Monday we wake up and there is another war between you know United States and uh, Iran. Let's, I mean, I think that's a black swan event. Most likely it's not gonna happen, but if it does happen, then you could get to the, you know, you could get to below 495. So one contract of $500 stock or ETF, that's $50,000, right? So if you have more than $50,000, then that's something you could do, right? If you don't, then I would pick, uh, you know, something that has a smaller strike. Like right now I'm managing XLF, right? I have XLF uh, merit put. So I bought it, I sold the call, I closed it, right, in XLF. You can see details here. So I closed the short call, right? Collected 60 cents and now I bought the put. So XLF is a $40 stock. So same thing, you could look at the positioning, right? And in theory, if we are in soft lending, then banks, should be the main beneficiary, right? Uh, then you can look at how people are positioned in XLF going into May 17th. Pretty large position at 39 strike, right? 39. So 2% to the downside, but you do have 39 level um, high open interest inputs, right? So same idea, if you can buy XLF, sell XLF 39 put, let's go into May expiration. 
and hold it for a month. You can collect same thing. You can collect one percent. But if you get a sign, now you have four thousand dollars worth of XLF, not fifty thousand dollars worth of spiders. So if you do have four thousand dollars or more, then that could be a, a strategy where you are reducing your cost basis. Uh, it's trading what? It's forty twenty three. So dollar twenty plus what? Dollar sixty. Dollar sixty. That's four percent. So you're reducing your entry point by four percent. And if assuming there is no war and VIX drops and yield stabilizes and earnings are better than expected, then bulls will step in and then you're fine. And if not, at least you reduce your cost basis by 4%. Google, same thing, right? So if you do Google, I would do the same thing. I would look at the. Uh, where are we positioned into, let's say, May? And that expires today. So the next level of support in April is 135. And biggest position is 130, 130, 135. That's, so there's not a lot of positioning in Google. Basically, people don't think it's going to go until 135. 135 is a little bit right so nobody thinks that you know it's gonna so if there's anything wrong or market does sell off you can quickly drop to 200 day moving average right um if you don't look at the positioning i would look at the again 50 day moving average and the gap right this gap should hold if it doesn't then google's in trouble so maybe 147 150. so if i look at the google 50-day moving average, so let's say one, is it 150? By that time, we'll probably get close to 150, okay. So Google, 147, 150, let's see. Not April 12th, but May 17th. May 17th, 150. So you can get 2% for selling 150. So your break even would be 147. So you can get, if you sell 150 puts that expires in May, but you are taking the risk of earnings, right? So just remember that if you are selling cash secured put in 150 that expires in May 17th, Google will announce earnings before that, right? Google announces earnings in 11 days, right? So then you, if they don't deliver like, uh, JP Morgan, then you could have a pretty significant move to the downside. If you think Google will deliver the earnings and the, this level will hold, then that, that's how we trade. I would sell 150 put and basically buying Google at, if you get a sign, you know, you would be assigned close to the 50 day moving average. Let me know if that makes sense. Any other questions? Looks like Spider is retesting. Well, last week low. This week low and last week low and 50 day moving average and QQQ, I think, is it's actually above last week low, about 436, but close to basically testing 50 day moving average. And you do have a pretty large move in VIX. I mean, it could be with this UVXI split. A lot of people talk about that. I don't know how much that has impact on volatility. I think the expectation that the VIX is actually going to drop, but you know, it is. Um, it may or may not be related to this, but I have a feeling that people are just uh, concerned with the war, and they are buying, you know, large quantities of. Spiders, right now, almost the second after the 500, right after the 500, the largest position is at 485. Right? 
and you have some people basically buying, you know, four ten stuff like that. Um, okay. In May, actually, the largest position is at four twenty. Four twenty or four fifty. So some people, you know, a lot of people think that we could drop to four fifty. So that's probably why, you know, by buying these spiders puts at four fifty, VIX is, has this vertical move to the upside. QQQ bullish or bearish for next thirty days? Well, I said I'm bullish on the market. I mean, short term, I agree with the model. The passive list resistance is to the downside, right? I am a little bit concerned that the high yield broke through the resistance and VIX has a vertical move to the upside. So usually that's a sign of some kind of distrust, right? We haven't had VIX kind of continuously going higher. I mean, we had these jumps, but they lasted one or two days. Here, we are persistently for the past, since April, right? For the past two weeks, VIX continues to go higher. And we're not that far away from October, November highs, right? Another day like this, and VIX is at 22. Uh, so this could be just hedge over the weekend. Was the was the idea that there will be there might be an escalation in Middle East. So Monday, if there is no escalation, then VIX is back to 15. Or obviously, if there is an escalation, then it's 22 and higher. So I think that's kind of the position. Any other questions? All right, it's 10, 10. Um, let's look at the other sectors. Let's sum it up in terms of what we see, how this week ends. We'll look at the weekly chain. So looks like materials, right, reversing from all-time high and finishing in the red, large candlestick in the red. Uh, home builders continue to pull back two weeks in a row, red candlestick, so that's bearish. Metals and miners, two weeks, I mean, retesting 2022 high, so again, commodities continue to rally. Weak China, China continues to be weak, kind of trading in the sideways for the past you know, few months. Very large move in volatility, right? So we have two weeks in a row of higher highs in uh, volatility. We haven't had that since September, right? Since September, we we had, but we did. We had at that point we had a more meaningful pullback. Uh, industrials down, also reversing, making new lows. So red candlestick, pretty strong move in dollar that's bearish for the market, right? Kind of a vertical move. It broke through this downtrend and basically retesting 107. Well, it's 106, next level is 107. So similar to 10-year yield, if it does break above 107, which would be the October highs when we had a pullback, right? That's you know, that would be a concern for the market as well. Uh, consumer discretionary. Another down week, healthcare. Another strong pullback in healthcare, second week to the downside. Uh, retail, pretty weak retail, two weeks in a row, uh, two red candlesticks. We haven't had that, you know, since the last pullback. Uh, transportation. Two weeks in a row of downward pressure. QQQ is probably no signal, right? It's kind of flat. QQQ is flat. Semiconductors, I think, also flat, right? They're not going anywhere. 
um, value stocks in general, I think the past two weeks kind of uh, a lot more downward pressure, right? They were leading the market since uh, February. Technology didn't really go anywhere since February, so now value stocks are leading the market to the downside. And spiders is um, at 512. Basically, uh, if, assuming we close at this level as uh, right now, the no new signal, right? We didn't make new lows. We didn't retest the highs either, but sitting at the key support, right? This 510 level. But if we do start seeing drop in 510, I think that's when uh, it's gonna probably the next level. I mean, the next level would be 500. Any questions? You have a large name in JD, large drop in even General Electric is down today. Mega cap, let's look at mega cap. Microsoft, no new signal. Meta, no new signal, right? Amazon, actually higher highs, higher lows, so bullish on Amazon, bullish on Apple, right? Apple is. A green candlestick. Nvidia is, uh, I think it's actually a green candle. No, it's actually flat. So we did make new lows uh, and we did not make new highs, but we are closing it over the upper range of this week, which is good. Uh, Micron is down. So it looks like a reversal in Micron, red candlestick, Qualcomm. All right, any questions? All right, if there are no other questions, that's all I have for today. Um, again, I think it is a vulnerable setup. I would look at the high yield. I would look at the VIX, uh, dollar, and treasury. I think if we do have a lot of it, I think it's because tension in the Middle East. If this is not going to be translated into the war between the United States and Iran, I think then VIX will drop and revert back. But obviously, if there is an escalation over the weekend and there is, you know, attack on land, you know, from land from Iran, territory of Iran to the territory of Israel and Israel retaliates or even or if Iran targets U.S. positions, that obviously could, um, you know, uh, cause the volatility to jump. All right, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much. And I will see you either at the closing bell today or Monday at the uh, live training room. Thank you very much and have a great day.